darling. I, I thought you were on your way to Adam's office. I am. I mean, I, I was. What, did you forget something? No, when I got there, it wasn't there. What? No, they're tearing the building down. There was a big, big wrecking ball and bulldozers. Oh, I forgot Adam moved his corporate headquarters. You should get a chauffeur to drive you to the new complex. Well, do you think I dare do that? Well, absolutely, darling. It'll look suspicious if you drive yourself. Oh, Stuart, I've got to tell you one more time how very proud I am of you. I really am. I'll take care of everything. Just give me a couple minutes. of life and death. I have no one else to turn to. Oh, dear. What's, what's the trouble? Are you okay? Don't you dare give my money away to that woman. She killed a man. With a crowbar, no less. So your donation would go a long way towards saving a life. Uh, lives. Um, I don't understand. These, where are these children? Right here in this town. Some of them. And how would you uh, go about helping them? Uh, by, by providing shelters? Do you take them away from their parents? Well, well, I haven't got all the details worked out yet. But I thought you'd like to know that Erica gave me a big donation. Oh, she did? Yes, and I, I know you don't want to be outdone by Erica. I mean, how would that look in public? Janet, are you in some kind of trouble? Is that what this is all about? You better deposit that before the real Adam comes back and puts a stop payment on it. That's a good point. Thank you, Stuart. Five million dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself a heck of a show. Mm. Don't forget your promise to me. I Ed. won't, okay? okay? Relax. By my estimation, we got an huh? extra half a million clams to do just that. Good, good. See you later. Are you sure you're okay with this? Why wouldn't I be? Well, in a way, sweetheart, it's kind of like a monkeying with Junior's inheritance. Oh, please. Five million dollars is chump change to Adam. Besides, when I was married to him, all that money made me uncomfortable. Well, in that case, maybe we should get our friend Stuart to give away some more. Oh, be careful, though, you know. Leave him a little money for a little bit of a college education. We can't exactly count on him getting a soccer scholarship. Maybe you should count on me, you know? Because I love that boy almost as much as I love you. Excuse me. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> that was weird. We were just talking about you. Oh. The strangest thing happened to me not too long ago. Well, it couldn't be any stranger than my day. What was it? I got funding for my new show. You're kidding. Mm -mm. The bank gave you your loan? No, no it wasn't the bank. Uh, 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 an investor? Yep. Anybody I know? Your husband. Are you in trouble, Jenny? I mean, uh, have you maxed out your credit card so afraid of Trevor's going to find out? Is that what the trouble is? No. Well, then what is it? You're obviously having some sort of a problem. Well, like I told you, I've been trying to raise money for this charity, and I, I haven't had much luck. I thought you said Erica gave you a donation. She did, but, it, but it's not enough, and I, I'm just getting a little antsy, I guess. No, Janet. There's something else. I can see it in your eyes. You're afraid of something. Or somebody. Why, that's silly. Who would I be afraid of? You 
tell me? Well, I can't pull fifty thousand dollars out of thin air. You could if you really wanted to. Now, say your darling little Amanda had a tragic accident resulting in staggering hospital bills. I'll bet you'd find the dough somehow. But that's not going to happen. Well, you never know with kids. They get into all kinds of dangerous situations. You're threatening me again. I wouldn't hurt a fly. You killed a prison guard. I don't like it when people get in my way. Now, I'm sure you can relate. The thing is, you threw sister's deer down a well. I told you, I'm a different person now. Look, why don't you just cut your losses and get out of town while you still can? Is that a threat? You know, Detective Fry has come around here asking questions about you. I haven't told him anything. Not yet. That's because you're smart. What are you afraid of, Janet? Nothing. So if you'll just tell me what it is you need in return, I'll, I'll see what I can do. What makes you think I want anything in return? Assuming I give you the money, of course. Well, you're Adam Chandler. There's always a quid pro quo. So, just tell me what it is. No, I don't want... I don't want anything. Just your promise that you'll use the money to keep kids safe. I swear on my life. That's all I need to know. Uh, who should I make the check out to? You're gonna give me the money just like that? Make it up to cash. Uh, cash. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I told you, I don't have all the details worked out. I, I haven't even decided on a name yet. I've got a file of the, the incorporation papers and all that stuff. Huh. Um, you know, if uh, you lose this, anybody could cash it. So I'm gonna go right from here directly to the bank and deposit it in my account. Your account? Yes, I can't set up a business account until, well, until those incorporation papers are filed. So I'm going to be the treasurer. I'll just put it into my account, and that way the money will get to the kids that much faster. Okay. What? Oh, whoops. Oh. <laughs> you changed your mind about the money? Uh, no, no, no. I forgot the zero. Oh, there. There, here we uh, cash, cash. Thank you. This means so much to me. Adam and Heather. Uh, you see. You see. And that. There you are. Thank you so much, Adam. You're welcome. You know, I don't care what anybody says. You're the most generous man I ever met. Uh. Uh, no, 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 I'm not. As a matter of fact, when I get out of here, I'm coming after you with a crowbar. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to, to wrinkle you or anything. Thanks again. I'll never forget this. Everything's taken care of. The chauffeur's going to drive you to the office. I'm sorry it took me so long, but Winifred had him out running a few errands. You all set to go? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, wish me luck. I'm, I'm off to run Chandler Enterprises. You don't need any luck. You're always brilliant. Mm. <laughs> 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 Who gave you a loan? Well, it wasn't really a loan. There was no paperwork involved. It was more like a gift. Five million dollars. You must have given quite the pitch. That's it? That's all you got to say? Congratulations. Everything should be this easy. Can I, can I see it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why? You think it's going to bounce? Oh, no. No, I, I actually, I cashed a, a check on this account today. Oh. I, I'm sure you, you're going to spend it in a lot of creative ways. Yeah, I think so, too. So are, are you uh, going to produce? Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. And as a matter of fact, I was kind of hoping that you would pick us up on WRCW. What was the name again? Nothing but the truth. Wow, that, that sounds sketchy. I, I would um, love to see it when it gets done. When is it going to be ready? As soon as possible. That way nobody has a chance to change his mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Chandler? Yes. Gregor's ready for you now. Great. Thanks, Tiffany. 
See you later. Uh, good luck. Great. Congrats. Do you think she knows? Oh, definitely. She's in on it, too. I can never get through there. I'm really pissed. Gotta get out of here. Before I lose it. Because you're the ones deciding your, your next man of the year, right? It's a big deal. Terrific. Well, I am telling you that what happens here tonight is going to affect your decision. Absolutely. Yeah, WRCW. No. No, as, 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 as soon as you can get here. No, that, that would be fine. Bye. Honey? What the hell is this? I send you out for a crowd, you come back with a Partridge family. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's just that I was kind of looking forward, you know, for a nice, healthy group for the announcement. You sent me to the mall, darling. There's only nine days before Christmas. Would you, are you, did you make sure that they knew they were going to meet Tad Martin? Well, actually, some of them think they're going to meet Ricky Martin. Sorry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. I'm, I'm Tad Martin. Thank you. That, that's that's very special. Um, I want to thank you all for being here tonight, and assure you that you will won't regret cutting short your, your your Christmas shopping because the event you are about to witness is one of national, if not historic, importance. Oh, really? Liza, terrific, ladies and gentlemen, my boss, Liza Colby Chandler. Liza, thank you for getting here so quick. No, no, thank you. What's, what's going on? What's going on? Oh yeah, um, everyone, if you'd like to come with me to the green room, we're gonna have refreshments and coffee and donuts and stuff like that. Just right this way, please follow me. An event of national and historical. Well, you're gonna have to forgive the hyperbole. I am about to make an announcement so big it is gonna blow the roof off this studio. And as a fringe benefit, it just kind of happens to play out into the first episode of my new show. Oh, you know, you're forgetting that you don't work here anymore. A temporary situation, my friend, only temporary because you were gonna be so excited by the genius of this idea. I'm willing to bet you're gonna, you're gonna rent me studio space for what, a, a, a dollar a year? A dollar? <laughs> yeah. Did it, did Adam's check not clear? No, honey, it cleared all five million bucks. Okay, um, but, okay, you have a genius idea. Great. And mm -hmm. then uh, I have to call Colby okay. Spanny and then, and then I'll be Terrific. more than happy No problem, to... honey. I'll, you go right ahead. I'll wait. I'll, I'll be right over here. What's going on? You didn't tell her? No, I'm not going to tell her any more than she needs to know. Don't you think you're pushing this a little no, too far? No, honey, listen to me. Now, we finally got a chance to stick it to Adam. After all the years, we can pay him back for all the lousy things he's ever done. The only twist is, tonight, the role of Adam will be played by Stuart. He's trying to cheer, cheer Jillian up after all she's been through. Oh, darling, I think it's a little more than that. I think there's something going on between them, darling. They make a wonderful couple, don't they? Oh, yeah. It would be, it'd be really nice if uh, she had somebody to care about him when he finds out about Colby. Oh, I'm so oh, angry at him what he did. Well, it's divine justice he's locked up right now because Liza's going to get a divorce, custody of Colby, and a huge chunk of Adam's fortune. Well, that's not going to do Jake any good. Or Adam. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's going to be hurting when the truth comes out. And, and it will. No lie can live forever. Hello. Oh. Oh, hello. Uh, we were uh, just talking uh, about how lovely that you look tonight, Jillian. It's good to see you. Yes, it is. W would you join us? Well, yeah, we just wanted to come over and say hi. And um, uh, actually, I, I want to ask you guys. Uh, what you think of this conversion of Adam to Mr. Nice Guy? <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah. I, I mean, do you buy it? I, I just can't help but think that, that, that the real Adam is going to come out and, I don't know, probably least expect it, just 
part his revenge on everybody, like when, when Liza decides to get a divorce. And I just, I don't know, I, I'm going to be prepared for it. Oh. Well, uh, he did give Liza back her TV station, and, and uh, the uh, uh, apology was real. How can you be so sure? Well, uh, um, in, in a sense, Adam is not really Adam anymore. Uh, yeah, but of course, uh, only Adam really knows what Adam is really thinking. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's true. Well, I just can't trust him. No matter how many times he laughs off a fine things. You know, Jake, I know that Colby is, is first and foremost in your life, and I want you to know that Stuart and I are equally concerned about her welfare as well. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. At first, I was afraid that she wouldn't really know me. But, uh, well, she looks at me now, and I, and I know that she can see her dad. And I know that Adam's always going to try to take my place, so we'll just have to watch out for him, I guess. So, that, that's your genius idea? You're going to feature Adam in the first episode of your new show? Liza, I'm telling you, it can't miss. I thought that you said this was going to be an expose kind Yeah, of well, thing. That, that sort of changed. Look, honey, I promise you, I can explain it all much better with Adam here. So please, could you c get him to come down to the studio? <laughs> you, you want me to convince him to, to come here? Sure. Now? So I can pitch the new idea, get him jazz, make an official announcement. I, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I just think that, you know... Who says he's even going to agree to any of this? I know he will. I mean, technically, he already has by giving me the money. Liza, it's all in the way I approach him. Okay, honey? Come on, trust me. Adam and I are barely speaking these days. I know. That's because you want to get a divorce. But I happen to know he's still in love with you. Not only that, he's, try he's trying to get back together. I mean, come on, let's be honest. That's the reason he's been a mensch lately, right? Look, I'm really sorry that you've gone to all this trouble, but I, I, I'm pretty much sure that he's not available tonight. Okay, fine. If, uh, if you can't find him, I'm afraid I'm, I'm just gonna have to, and I can't stop till I do. I got a lot right on this, so do me a favor. Could you give me a ride over to your house? Oh. I'll, I'll call. I'll, I'll see. And, and I'm not promising anything. <sighs> Mother, where are you? We'll pay the check. I need, I need Stuart to play Adam. No, darling, that's really out of the question, Liza. Mother, it's, it's Tad. Tad has got something going on, and you know him. He's not going to let it go. Darling, Stuart is tired. And anyway, he's been popping in and out of character all night. He really needs to rest tonight, darling. What's she asking? I'm sure it's not going to take very long. I think Tad's going to do all the talking. Darling, it's not a good idea, Liza, okay? Hey, let me talk to you. Oh, okay, Stuart's going to talk to you. Hello, Liza. It's me. Um... You want me to uh, pretend to be, uh, what's his name again tonight? Stuart, it, it's, it's Tad. Tad has some, some sort of idea or something, and I'm sure it's designed to get under Adam's skin. But if, if you don't want to do it, if you want to put Adam to bed tonight, I understand. I'll, I'll just tell Tad. Oh, Adam has made such a mess of it. Well, maybe this idea that Tad has will undo some of that. Okay, I'll come. Stuart, I hate to sound negative, but I don't have a good feeling about this. I'll be okay. Oh, you had a slip with that girl just a few minutes ago. You're tired, darling. What if the wrong twin pops out suddenly? Huh? Well, uh, you'll be right over. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, I do. I'll uh, pretend to be Adam and uh, put him to bed, and then I'll pretend to be me and put us to bed. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Make it quick, Martin. The Tokyo market market opens in um, um, two. All right, fair enough. Our last televised appearance together did us both a lot of good. 
So much so, I want to build on it. Matter of fact, I want to make sure the whole world knows what kind of man the new Adam Chandler really is. More pies in the face? No. No, no more pies in the face. Just a lot of fantastic publicity for you and Chandler Enterprises. Well, go on, go on. Premise is simple, okay? Adam Chandler, a multimillionaire with an international reputation for being a ruthless, cold-hearted megalomaniac, suddenly has a revelation, decides he wants to be jolly old Saint Nick. Santa Claus? In, in the red suit? Well, I... The choice of wardrobe I leave to you and, you know, your tailor. The point is, whatever you're wearing, you come on this show and you give away millions and millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. No, hear me out, okay? Now, up till now, the world knows Adam strictly as a man that uses his power and his money solely for the purposes of, of, of profit and self-aggrandizement with, with, with absolute abandon. Hell, you're pra practically an icon of self-interest. I'm proud of it. Okay, well, I ask you, what's the PR benefit of that? And what if the public suddenly saw a different side of Adam Chandler? I mean, what about Adam Chandler, the amazingly generous and, and, and unapologetically caring man? Imagine what would happen to your reputation, your influence, and your stock mm -hmm. if suddenly you became the most generous man on the planet. Santa Claus. <laughs> I know it's not really you. Hmm? Well, I mean, look at you. You're, uh, you're Adam Chandler. You don't care about doing good for the planet, do you? Of course not. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, uh, a, a financier. And that's the best part, because even if people don't know your heart's in the right place, it doesn't matter. Because all they see is a man transformed from selfish to selfless. A man that does all these amazing things with all that cash. And I'm talking about scholarships, legal defense funds, uh, medical research. I'm talking about giving away millions and millions and millions. Pat, Pat just wait a minute. No, 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 you wait a minute, Liza. Just, just, just... Go on, go on. Well, that's it. I mean, what's all the money doing right now, Adam? Where is it? I mean, is it, is it in stocks and bonds or sitting in a vault somewhere? Or, or, or maybe neither. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a bunch of code on a computer program somewhere. But what if suddenly it started turning into homes for the homeless, medicine for sick children? Imagine schools springing up in, in barren fields filled with books and computers and hot lunches. Hell, you could be Santa Claus and Zorro and Robin Hood all rolled into one. Your generosity could touch people for generations. Well, then who cares? Ah, it means nothing to me. No, but your public image does. You said it yourself. You're a financier. You're always going to make more money. Why not give some of it away? In nice, big, juicy quantities. Tad, you, you, you don't surely think that he is going to give all his money away. No, I don't. But that's what's so great about this. With a media forum like this one, it'll just seem that way. But then again, I expect that Adam can make up his own mind, right? I don't give a tinker's damn about the unemployed or the, the homeless. There's no excuse in this country to be poor. Not unless you're afraid of good hard work. Yeah, well, I know that, and you know that, but for no, all... shut up! Let me finish. Please. Uh, now, this... In the business world, what you're talking about here is, um... It's called, um... A win-win situation. Now, if, you, if this proposal that, that, that you're proposing would make me and Chandler Enterprises look... Very good. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So, fine. I'll do it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, see that just goes to show you. The bigger they are, the bigger they are. I knew you'd agree with me. Yeah. But only out of self-interest. Absolutely. Well, you know, with a little bit of luck, I think we can get this puppy rolling in no time at all. I'll have my people call your people. You have people? 
I'm getting people. Oh. Well, I'm sure uh, I should offer my congratulations, Adam, because you're going to make a lot of people very happy. Oh. Thank you. Um, and I would hope that you tell my son that, that, that his father is, uh, is a very nice man. Well, yes, I will. All right, well, that's, 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 that's that. Uh, um, where, where I'm out of here. Uh, no, no, no. I, you see, I've got a photographer from the Wall Street Herald uh, waiting there in the wings. I, I say we you know, take a little time out for a little photo op, you know, make an official announcement. Get that publicity rolling as soon as possible. An official announcement? Mm -hmm. right, right, right here and, and right now. You, yeah. Now. now. Well, that would, um, that would uh, certainly uh, uh, be something that we couldn't retreat from. So it would be no way of uh, backing out. Fine. Good. Let's hurry it up. Oh. What? What did I do okay, my son? You did better than okay. Gentlemen, I predict that this project is going to usher in a new age of philanthropy not seen since the days of Andrew Carnegie. I give to you our new benefactor, Adam Chandler, a Santa Claus for the new millennium. Great, great. One more. No, 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 no more, no. I'm a very busy... Carol, Carol, how are you? Who knew Adam could be so agreeable? Just, just a minute, just... You know, don't you? This is where the dish comes together. First, we carve the succulent roast tenderloin of pork. Oh, look at those juices going. Now, you folks at home, lean in real close and get a whiff of this baby. Man, is that good. Now, we're going to put garlic potatoes in there. Lay them on there. Is that enough? You want more? <laughs> torture. Just pure torture. That's what it is. It's pure, unadulterated torture. They're in direct defiance of the Geneva Convention. <laughs> My God, I'm beginning to unravel. I'm going crazy. I'm going to go crazy if they don't, don't let me out of here. Oh. And while I'm in here going crazy, my brother is out there pretending to be me and, and, and decimating my entire fortune. <laughs> And the worst part of it is, I haven't, I haven't seen my Colby. I haven't held her in my arms. Oh, who knows how long? Oh, oh, baby, sweet. Oh, Colby, Colby. <laughs> baby, your daddy misses you so much. <laughs> Get a grip, Adam. You've got to keep your sanity, for Colby's sake. How? I know. I know. I'll do what the what the what the uh, prisoners of war do. I'll I'll, I'll 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 keep my mind razor sharp and my body fit, so that when the time comes, I can successfully engage the enemy. Technically, you know isn't a question. All right, let me let me uh, rephrase. What do you know? And how long have you known it? What do you mean, like a tomato's a fruit, not a vegetable? About my my husband, that he's not the same person. 
Oh, I get it. Okay, finally. You want me to apologize, is that right? No, no, you know, absolutely. You deserve it. You were right, I was wrong. I'm sorry. The man that just walked out of this studio is a prince, and that's for the record. Uh, no, enough with the double talk. No, 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 no double talk. I, I mean it. I mean, thanks to him, now I've got to go out there someplace and find a hundred people who want to be instant millionaires. Ah. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on the phone to Regis and find out where he gets those really big checks. Right, freeze, Buster. Another step, and I'm going to pull the plug on this show, and I'm going to strangle you with it. I don't care how much money that you're getting out of Mr. Chandler. We are going to set the record straight. Yes, I'd love to hang around and discuss your husband's finer points with you, Look, but you, I, I don't you have are not going I've got to launch a show. You give me some answers. What answers? I don't know what you're talking about. You are playing about. dumb right now. Savvy. my new show. I mean, someone who defines style. And naturally, you thought of me. Well, naturally, but I know how busy you already are. Haley, you and I just really work very, very well together. I'm excited to be part of your new show. Really? Yeah, I could really use the input. Well, fine. Well, uh, do you have a name for your show? Um, actually, I'm working on that. Uh, well, uh, strictly working titles. Okay. Um, Rebel Trend Spotting. Styling with Haley. Star Styles. TV Unmasked. You know what? Naming shows like naming a pet. When you know it, you will know it for sure. The shoe will fit. Liza. <laughs> yes. Where is Ryan Lavery? Uh, God. Uh, yeah. Gone for the day. Uh, he better not be. I expect all hands on deck in five minutes to prep for tomorrow's tape. What? What? What do you need Ryan for? Well, I need him to quote me the current airtime rates because I would like to be the major sponsor of Haley's new show. It's a perfect tie-in for Enchantment Spring Live. What a great idea. Hey, listen, it's none of my business, but give Mama a call. I mean, you could always tie the glamorama into your immediate pitch. Really? Uh -huh. Yes. What, what time do you want to run the dry rehearsal? As soon as possible. Rehearsal? Okay, well, why is it? Okay, who's paying for the rehearsal? Who's paying for the crew? Who's paying for the overtime? Yeah. Hi, everybody. What? Hey, Ray. Erica. Hi. Hi. Hello. Liza, you look a little... You know what? Vitamin B. Yeah. We'll pick you right up. Well, Tad... Are we still on for the great Adam Chandler giveaway? You betcha. Yeah. The silver fox is primed and ready to slap down the big dilemma. Uh, excuse me, Adam Chandler is giving away money for free? That's impossible. Oh, believe it. Believe it. He's agreed to ban Cruel Tad's new show. And he's going to cough up a cool hundred million dollars in prize money. A hundred... Liza? Has Adam had another stroke? Oh, oh I'm not going to stand here and debate my husband's generosity. Or his mental state. Ladies, ladies, please. <laughs> we got a promo to brainstorm, especially if we're going to be ready for prime time tonight. No, now, we listen, have a discussion what do you think about that, that we have I finished. I can't talk to you while you're here. Gotcha. Queenly. If you really would like a job on Haley's show, being seen kissing the guy who was practically dating her does not look very good on your resume, okay? Duh, I knew that, which is why I grabbed you back here. I see. All right, well, this place is a zoo. Anybody can walk by and see us. Ryan, Tad's screaming for your head. You see? Okay. Yeah. I'll behave. For now. Looks like Marsha Brady to me. Oh, so, Ryan, where have you been? I called you an hour ago. Yeah, listen, I am dying to show you something, and my job is not to mind my own business. Oh, and you do that so well. Thank you, Erica. So, Haley, I was sitting in the makeup chair, and I had this idea for your new show that I hope you might like. I went to graphics, and they did a little mock-up, so... Oh! It is. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. I love it. Do you? I get to have my own cartoon. And action figures be far behind. <gasps> Erica, what do you think? I think since Haley loves it, it's perfect. Oh, Erica's agreed to be my consultant slash oh, style coordinator. Well, if it's about style, and Chandler wants to be there. <laughs> Got a fly. Okay. Bye-bye. Good Bye. luck. Bye. Bye. I know, if Erica had never been born, they really should have invented her, don't you think? We have some unfinished business that we need to take. Honey, what are you still doing here? Well, I found you a guy Friday. Where? Right here. It's Leo. Are you insane? Aside from being Hayward's stepbrother and Vanessa's son, he's Palmer's latest bullwink. He looks three big <laughs> shots against him right now. No, no, don't judge me by the company that I keep. Why shouldn't I? Have you ever worked in a TV studio before? I used to hang around the Chinichita studios in Rome. 
The Konichi what? what? Yeah. They're doing what? Yeah. Hanging around. <laughs> Chow pal. Oh, come on. Give me a trial run. Keep me off the streets and make your wife happy. Yeah, Ted. Make your wife happy. I'm not going to regret this. Okay, fine. You want a trial run? How's about you go out and scrounge up 100 people who want to be instant millionaires? You think you do that? Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. Just kidding. Get to work. Oh, thanks, Dixie. <laughs> no, don't thank me. I have a feeling you're going to be a natural at this. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> hey there. How are the polar bears doing? Hey, can we have a, a production meeting first thing in the morning? I've got a zillion ideas for the new giveaway show. Only a zillion? Well, you know, large sums of money are so inspirational, don't you think? Especially well, when they're coming me, out I of really Adam's bank. Really need to yeah. have a special little conversation with Mr. TBQ. Uh -huh. I want you to stop playing innocent. I know that you know that Stuart is impersonating Adam. No way! Would you stop doing that? Be honest with me. You know what you're doing. You want my husband to give away all his money before Stuart gets caught. Get this straight. You think that Stuart is pretending to be Adam? You know he is. Well, I got a hand to you, Eliza. That's, that's quite a fantasy there. Although, I mean, it would explain a lot of things, such as Adam handing out checks like they were candy cane. I, when did you catch on? When? Whoa, sister. I, I'm, I'm not sure you weren't in need of some serious medication here. I mean, even if, if Stuart were willing to do such a thing, who could put him up to it? My mother. <laughs> Marion? Marion? That's rich. Okay, okay, I'll go with it. So, so what would Marion stand to gain from all this? It's complicated. Yeah, well, I should say so, because stand back. Here comes the best part. What is Adam doing while his brother's out there robbing from the rich and giving to the poor? Adam is on retreat. You mean like... Retired? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, okay, this is good. So just 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 to clarify, um somehow Marion was able to convince Adam to just hang up the old silk suit and let Stuart take the limo out for a spin, huh? Okay, okay. Where exactly has has Adam or your soon-to-be ex uh, been hanging out all this time? It doesn't matter. Oh, I see. Okay, you know. You're right, you're right. Because um, the less you say, the better. Because, hey, I wouldn't want to be part of a kidnapping conspiracy because, let's face it, the only way Stuart could get away with something like this is if Adam were dead somewhere or locked in a truck. Stop it. Don't worry about Adam. He got what he deserved. I'm impressed. And I thought you were ticked off when he stole the TV station. Well, that's not all he did. Hey, you don't have to justify yourself to me. As far as I'm concerned, you did the world a major favor. It doesn't give you an excuse to loot his bank account, Oh, Dad. yes, it does, sister, because I got Adam's permission. Stuart does not have the authority to sign away his brother's fortune. Oh, don't look now, but it looks like he's doing a really, really good job of it. Oh. Besides, you got your own money. What do you care if Damien gets fleeced? Let me tell you something. It's Colby's inheritance, and I will not Colby, let Colby's sister, estate be about? sold down the river by a talk show host. Colby is Jake's daughter, not Adam's. Adam's already got three children out there who've got to contend with the karma of his ill-gotten gains. And not for nothing, but speaking as her uncle, the less that Colby inherits from your soon-to-be ex-husband, the better it is. You're right. Adam should not be making any investments in my daughter's future. Come on, Liza, look at the bright side, okay? You and I both know that money does not buy happiness, but I, for one, am really going to have a good time watching this entire town lining up to give it a shot. You want my advice? Get yourself a really good settlement. Take the alimony and run like hell before I bleed that old gas bag dry. All right, everybody, heads up! I want that bowl ready to go in an hour. I, uh, I faxed over the ad race to Erica's office. Great, great. She's a major capital infusion. Haley, anything I can do to help? No, actually, we got it under control. Okay, well, if you need anything, anything at all, just whistle. Will do. Mr. Lavery, nice to see you again. Excuse me, folks, but now is definitely not the time to go to the kitchen and get that sandwich, because it just might cost you $1 million. 
Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I am Tad Martin, and I am the host of a hot new show called Nothing But The Truth. And we are kicking things off live tomorrow night with none other than Adam Chandler, who will be digging deep and passing out millions of dollars to people in need. So, if you think you deserve a shot at being instant millionaire, studio operators are standing by to take your call. The number is 555-1717. You call us now. Tell us why you think you deserve a million bucks. And this Sorry to disappoint you, buddy. But my bucks stop right here. Well, um, Stuart is going to meet me at the mall. He's afraid that too many people will recognize him right away. Well, darling, are you sure the show is a good idea? I mean, I'd hate to see Tad give away the entire Chandler fortune. I mean, I'm only thinking about Colby and, and Stuart getting their fair share. Of course, well, Stuart's money is in trust, Mother, so your future's going to be taken care of, and Colby's going to be a wealthy little girl after the divorce is final. This is really going to hit Adam right where it hurts. Well, he's so used to buying himself out of any situation, but this time he's going for broke. When we get done with him, he's not even going to be able to afford a latte. Liza, I'm so proud of you fighting at him the way you are. You really must hate him a lot, darling. I hate what he did to me and to Colby, and I won't forgive him ever. Does Adam know that? Well, he will when he turns on the TV and he sees all of us giving away his precious fortune. <laughs> Why don't I run home and make sure he tunes in, huh? Be my guest. I'll see you later. Shop was really crazy. Are you, are you nervous? I was, but until I saw this lady over here, the people are coming by and putting coins in her bucket, even though they don't have much themselves, just so everybody can have a nice Christmas. That's well, the spirit of giving. Yeah, that's the spirit that Adam just doesn't get. I don't know, why does he want to keep all that money in a bank? I, I'd rather help people with it. You have a very generous spirit, Stuart. I just wish I could be both me and Adam. And then I could ask me for a million dollars for Cindy's hospice, and I'd be, I'd be glad to give it to me. <laughs> well, maybe there's a way we can get you your money in Cindy's name. You think so? Mm. Oh, do you hear that, Cindy? <laughs> oh, what's wrong? There's Junior with Becca. Oh, uh, if, if uh, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be sure to recognize me. If he gets too close, our whole plan will be going completely. What? Let's just get out of here, because you need to try this on anyway. Try what on? Surprise. Can we hurry up with the mics? Honey, I don't think I can do this. I know you can't. I told you, just pretend that you're Kathy Lee and I'm Regis. Unless, of course, you want to be Regis. Tad, uh, Dixie, we're live in 30 places, please. All right. Okay, maybe here we go. Just take a deep breath and just follow my lead. Okay, you're going to be fantastic. Hey, everybody, we're going to be on the air in a few seconds here. So when we go, we can do some really, really, really big applause, okay? Here we go. Four, three, two. Welcome. My name is Tad Martin. This is the premiere edition of a show we call Nothing But The Truth. We are being brought to you live from the uh, beautiful Pine Valley Mall in downtown Pine Valley. 
Now, as some of you may remember, not too long ago on this very station, multi-millionaire Adam Chandler was struck in the face with a pie because of his surprise takeover of WRCW. It's a little something we at the station call Just Desserts. <laughs> I didn't write it. Anyway, the purpose of that show was to teach old Ebenezer Chandler that people aren't things you just step over on your way up the ladder of success. Well, blame it on the banana cream, folks, but a miracle has happened. Doesn't look like old Adam is going to be humbugging his way through Christmas this year. As a matter of fact, he is with us tonight, and he's going to be spreading the wealth, quite literally, from his own pocket to those of you who desperately need some Christmas cheer. Now, as a matter of record, you should know that this entire show was made possible by Mr. Chandler, and our gracious benefactor is here tonight of his own free will. You damn you, Martin. Martin. The the first when I get out of here, I got to wish you'd never been born. He's supposed to be the relationship guru that you know as Dr. Ray, unfortunately. The doctor called, called away on a house call. So a beautiful and talented woman has stepped in to save the day. Would you please put your hands together for my wife, Dixie Cooney Martin. Adorable. She's a little nervous. You can tell, can't you? Hi, friends. Back in prison. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> okay, honey. I think it's time to bring out our guest. Okay. Um, everybody, here's the moment you've all been waiting for in our big box giveaway. The reason for the season, Mr. Millionaire known as the Grinch, Mr. Adam Chandler. <laughs> Stuart, you're turning me into well, Santa Claus? Well, I'm ruined. Nothing but the truth. Yes, tell us why you decided to play uh, Santa. It's a travesty. Well, it's a uh, disease. I've got to stop this. Jolly, and to peace on earth, goodwill, and men, all that. So I decided to spread around as much joy and, and happiness as possible. <laughs> deal with you later. <laughs> And it's tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, my, 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 we have been busy, haven't we? We decorating your bunker for the holidays? Something to do to pass the time, Mary. Oh, darling, you're bored, aren't you? Well, it's lucky I came along, because the networks are airing some really incredible shows this time of year I wouldn't want you to miss. Act oh, you've got it on, actually. Uh, turn up the sound and pull up a chair, because Adam Chandler, this is your life. So, Santa, are you ready to make somebody's holiday dreams come true? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. We'll take that as a yes. Okay, Charlie Abrams, come on down. Hey, I know that kid. We used to play street hockey sometimes after school. So, Charlie, I guess you're a little bit too big to sit on Santa's lap, huh? Charlie, you want to tell me what's on your Christmas wish list this year? Go ahead, Charlie. You won't bite. Yeah, I like that name, Charlie. You ever read a book called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Oh, ho, ho. I love that book. One of my favorites. What if you had a, could win a golden ticket that you could trade for anything in the world? Anything in the world that you wanted, what would that be? Well, it's not just for me. There was a place I went after school to junk around with other kids. We had counselors who helped us with our schoolwork and teachers who volunteered to teach art and karate and oh. stuff. Sounds like fun. Used to be. Till some drug addicts set the place on fire. Nothing left but ashes. Now we've got no place to go. How much do you think it would cost to rebuild that clubhouse? Charlie? You think um one million dollars would do it? There you are. Thank you, Santa. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. so. Uh, let's see if we can get a uh, close-up of that. 
that check. More than anything, I wanted my son to be proud of me. Well, the moment's come, Adam. But it's not you he's proud of. It really hurts, doesn't it, to know that Stuart makes a much better Adam than you could ever be. You are the hostess with the most. <laughs> I can see why you like your job. It's fun. Oh, I'm a little worried about Junior, though. How is he going to feel when he finds out that all of this has been just a game to get back at Adam? Especially since we made his father a hero. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe if Adam's watching, what he sees will make him realize that he's got to change, you know? At least for Junior's sake. Better living through television? Don't count on it. Maybe. Hey, hey, Jake, what's going on? You come down to join our band of merry men? And women. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Liza just called me. She said it was urgent. I was supposed to demand a million dollars from Adam for Cindy's hospice. That's a great idea. You've got to do it. Yeah, I, I agree, but... Adam, Santa Claus? to something not? screwy. No, 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 wait a minute. Maybe there's a season of the spirit caught up with him. No, he's not going to give away a million dollars. Not unless you got a gun to his head. No, I don't believe in violence. There's something screwy going on here. Why are you here? looking a gift millionaire in the in I, the mouth? Why don't you just grab you the money and run to the bank? I have a bad feeling about well, take this. Take two aspirin and call me in the morning. You'll feel better. Honey, Eli's waiting at us. we got to go. All right, come on. Oh. We're coming back. Come my hair. Commercial break. Right, you just stand by. Stand by. And uh, we're going to go again, folks. Pretty soon. Oh, watch yourself there. And uh, you know what to do. So here we go in four, three, two, one. million dollar giveaway and it's my pleasure to introduce direct from the Pine Valley Hospital none other than my brother Dr. Jake Martin. Well Jake what can Santa do for you today? Um well Santa um I'm here on behalf of the Cindy Chandler AIDS Hospice uh for those of you who don't know who Cindy was she was uh, an incredible woman whose life didn't end when she passed away. Her good works, I guess they, they, they live on through her hospice, which provides care and comfort for those suffering from AIDS. So, Santa, uh, with the money, I promise uh, it will be used to, to help ease the suffering of those suffering from AIDS. And um, in the name of, of Cindy Chandler and in her spirit, I ask you for help. Well, in the name of Cindy Chandler and her spirit. I made something for you. I don't have anything for no, you. No, 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 it's okay. It's, it's not a Christmas present. It's, um, it's more of a, a peace offering. It's chocolate sauce, six is recipe. I, I made it from scratch. That, that, that's, that's sweet of you. Literally. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh. Excuse me, excuse me. Scott. Yeah. We have an audio problem. I, I need you right now. Okay, sure. I, 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 I'll, I'll see you after yes. the show. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. I made it from Dixie's recipe cup. Isn't that too, too precious? Oh! Oops! <laughs> Call me Miss Butterfingers. <laughs> you did that on purpose. Oh. Well, you can always go back to put some droppings or wherever you come from and whip out the new batch. No, 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 no. Let me do it. Go Thanks. ahead. I don't want you cutting yourself. Thank you. Hey, you there, with the mop and the day glow jumpsuit. We've got a cleanup over here. Hey there. Brooke, how do you like the show so far? Actually, it's uh, unbelievable. Why are you doing this, Adam? Oh, why, look at that. Our stage manager is motioning us back. We're coming back from a live uh, commercial break. You have to take your seat, honey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're back, and we hope you are ready to watch the most generous man on the face of the planet make one of you an instant millionaire. Not if I can stop you. 